Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. All right, well, I'm here with Angela Brackenreed on a very windy fall day. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we need to talk about club root. In Manitoba, it's in Alberta, farmers need to be looking for this, scouting for this. Angela, walk us through what we need to look for. Okay, well, Lindsay, the reality is in Manitoba, the spore load is going to be fairly low. Um, so those above ground symptoms may not be all that obvious. Um, really, we should be out a little bit earlier than we are right here. But the reality is in Manitoba, um, what you're probably going to be seeing is symptoms on the roots that are fairly early, like the onset of that symptoms might be fairly early. So those above ground symptoms might not really be showing up. So digging, digging and looking at the roots is probably the, the first thing you should be doing. Um, if you have an entrance in your field that you typically use, what I would recommend is checking that area first because this is where you're going to be trafficking in most of that soil from neighboring fields and, and it's going to kind of be falling off your equipment right in, you know, at about 100 meters of that entrance. A lot of guys actually will typically turn to the right. So if you go into your entrance and to the right and start digging up in that area, that, that would be the first thing I would recommend. And now, all right, so we're going to do a bit of digging and we'll, well, we're not likely to find anything here, but we'll show kind of what to do. But tell me a bit about what's on your feet. Why are you wearing that? On my feet, I have booties. And uh, the reason for this is, is basically biosecurity. Um, we don't want to be trafficking anything into a field and we don't want to be trafficking anything out of a field. So before I go into any field, I put these booties on and before I go out, I take them off and dispose of them. Alright, okay, so let's dig. Okay. So basically dig and knock off the dirt and here you can see we have a, a clean root but what you'd be looking for is any little uh, bumps or nodules. Uh, one thing to remember, we have been getting quite a few samples sent in that are hybridization nodules and a way to know the difference in the fall is uh, Club root galls in the fall will, will be brown and starting to decay where hybridization nodules will still appear white and firm. Um, but but it, it is important to send in these samples to a lab if you're, if you're not sure and get a positive, uh, a, pos or a, a test done so you can be sure. So you can clip this here and, uh, and keep this sample and, and send that in. Now, <clears throat> so unfortunately, it has, it has been found in Manitoba, symptoms have been found in Manitoba, although the risk is still relatively low. Um, we do need to be scouting for it, we need to be thinking about it. What role does variety play in this? Because we do have some tolerant varieties, but is that a fail safe? You know, there, there are very good um, varieties out there that do have a, an R rating to club root, um, but I, like any disease or, or pest, I wouldn't recommend that growers rely on this. Um, we all know that uh, a breakdown of resistance can happen quite quickly, um, and I think more important in Manitoba is to learn from our neighbours to the west and try and prevent this from spreading and um, prevent it from getting into our fields because um, you know we can't rely on genetic resistance and it, it is really a long-term management once you get it in your field so basically trying to stop it from getting in there is is our number one priority right and the resistant varieties still become infected just not as badly right that's right and um like like i said you don't you don't want to rely on this like black leg right uh, you don't want to rely on on varietal resistance because it can break down. So if you are to go into your field and, and, look, and are looking for symptoms above ground, ideally you'd want to go in just prior to swathing, maybe a week or two weeks prior to swathing, or um, right after swathing. So if you're looking for symptoms on the plant, basically it's, it's similar to sclerotinia-like symptoms. Uh, what the galls will do is kind of cut off uh, water and nutrient supply to the plant. So essentially it just premature, prematurely ripens. So if you go in two, two weeks prior to swathing, let's say, um, you're looking for that bleached kind of uh, prematurely ripened plant. Uh, if you're seeing that, obviously it could be black leg, it could be sclerotinia, or now it could be club roots. So digging up roots is, is the best thing to do when you see that.
So if you dig up some roots and, and clip them off and you're concerned about what you're seeing, put it into a, a paper bag and um, to, to check protocols or, or areas where you can send these uh, samples into, go to clubroot.ca. There's different labs in, uh, in the different prairie provinces that you can send these into and, and their specific protocols are on clubroot.ca. So now I'm going to talk about sanitization and um, obviously this is on a small scale uh, but it is really the the same steps that you would be taking on a, a piece of equipment on your farm and this is what I do every time I go in and out of any any field um, typically I like to do it at my truck on the tailgate uh, just that kind of at the the field entrance so first I have my equipment here what I want to do is get off any loose soil that's on uh, the equipment that I'm using so basically get that off there first. Um, one thing to mention with that is if it is a really wet, uh, if it has been really wet, maybe best not to go in the field at all because if you imagine, um, you know, even how difficult it is to get stuff off a small shovel, imagine that as, as your seeding equipment or your combine, how difficult that is to, to get all of that wet mud off of a, a big piece of equipment like that. So like I said, get the uh, loose dirt off. The next thing you do, or what I do, is uh, use water and clean it off. So in, in a farming operation, that would be a pressure washer. So we've got that all off. The next step is to use a, a bleach solution. So a 1% bleach solution works and spray down any equipment that you're using. Now to be effective, uh, that bleach solution should really uh, soak on there for 15 to, to 20 minutes. Now, uh, Angela, what about farmers bringing in equipment from say, let's say they bought it in Saskatchewan or they bought it in Alberta. How important is it to give it a good clean, perhaps before transport or before it hits the field? Yeah, that's really important. Um, you know, first off, you should know where that equipment is coming from. If you're getting it at an, at an auction, inquire about where it did come from. If it's coming from the West, then even more important. But, but really at this point, now that we have it in all three provinces, it really should be clean no matter where it's coming from. Um, and I would, I would really do that before you transport it at all. Um, if it already has come to your farm and you, and you didn't think about that or before you left the auction, maybe do it in your farmyard and try and kind of keep that segregated in a small area in your farmyard. Okay, thanks so much, Angela.